Now, there was a victory for free speech today. Whatever people may feel about the standing of Parliament, it has been a basic principle for hundreds of years that anything may be said there. Lawyers had tried to prevent the media reporting a question in the House of Commons. They backed down this afternoon, but their attempt points up the way that Britain has now become the destination of choice, not just for theatre or history-hungry tourists, but for corporations and plutocrats with a grievance. Liz McKean reports. Reporting on matters in Parliament is one of the fundamentals of free speech in this country. But that long and proud history was briefly interrupted this week by a London firm of libel lawyers, Carter Ruck. MPs from all parties are now demanding an investigation. It clearly has a chilling effect if big corporate and private interests can play the legal game to prevent uh, newspapers and other media outlets from subjecting them to unwelcome media scrutiny. This is the latest twist in the troubled saga that's followed the illegal tipping of poisonous waste in West Africa three years ago. The incident left tens of thousands of people in Ivory Coast seeking medical treatment. Trafigura, the company which generated the chemical waste, is suing Newsnight and the BBC over our reporting of what happened. At the same time, Trafigura's lawyers, Carter Ruck, obtained a secret injunction to prevent the Guardian newspaper revealing the contents of an expert report into the poisoning. Order. Uh, point of order, Mr Paul Farrelly. However, that secret threatened to spill out after the Labour MP Paul Farrelly raised the matter in a written question to Parliament. The question was printed on the order paper yesterday and relates to the activities of Trafigura, an international oil trader at the centre of a controversy concerning toxic waste dumping in the Ivory Coast. Today, Mr Farrelly told MPs what happened next. Yesterday, Mr Speaker, I understand that Carter Ruck quite astonishingly warned the newspaper of legal action if the Guardian reported my question. MPs lined up to express their outrage at what they saw as an attempt to gag the reporting of Parliament. This injunction is a new class of injunction, so-called super injunction, in which the press are not even allowed to report the injunction itself, the existence of the case, and that is how Parliament's reporting has been stopped by this. Today, The Guardian carried a teasing article about the injunction on its front page, leading to hyperactivity in cyberspace. Instead of securing silence, Trafigura and Carter Ruck became the most talked about stories on Twitter, and not just in Britain. By lunchtime, Carter Ruck had agreed to vary the injunction so Paul Farrelly's question could be reported. So, now we can tell you that it concerns the Minton Report, commissioned by Trafigura in the weeks after the dumping in Ivory Coast. However, we're still not allowed to tell you what the report says. Judges, for various reasons, are closing their courts uh, and, indeed, are giving injunctions in secret hearings and then putting injunctions upon injunctions so that the, uh, the fact that the injunction has been given uh, is not even reportable. And I think that's a very worrying trend. In relation to freedom of speech. Concern about the use or misuse of British libel laws is not just a matter for the media. This is a campaign meeting ahead of an appeal court hearing tomorrow. There's a worry that scientists are also losing the right to do what they're supposed to do, which is ask questions. These are the Westminster sceptics. They campaign to ensure that public policy is based on the facts and nothing but the facts. They're discussing the case of Simon Singh, who's being sued by the British Chiropractic Practic Association for having the temerity to question in print whether the practice is the cure-all that's claimed. He faces financial ruin. There's something fundamentally wrong in the way we implement libel law in this country. It means that if I'm a blogger, I can't afford to defend my writing. If I'm a journalist, in, in nearly every case, you can't afford to defend your writing. And if you can't do that, then what you really have to do is back down, apologise. Even if you really believe that what you've written is correct, um, worse still, you end up with journalists writing material that's gutted of any real meaning. And, and even worse than that, you end up with journalists not touching various topics because they just can't afford the risk of being sued for libel. When it comes to Trafigura, the company has always insisted that the reports into the Ivory Coast dumping have not been correct. They and their lawyers have gone to great lengths 
to keep the full details of the story out of the public domain. But the international repercussions are making that impossible. Well, with us now are Mark Stevens, media lawyer, and Matthew Nicklin, media barrister, who's represented, among others, Madonna. It is extraordinary that you can get to a point where an injunction could possibly prevent the reporting of something in Parliament, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, it's completely ridiculous uh, and, frankly, unprecedented. I mean, we have a situation where uh, the resolution uh, or the, the question that Paul Farrelly MP put down in Parliament was on Parliament's website. The injunction couldn't reach Parliament's website. Um, it only prevented publication in England and Wales, yet People in America, in Australia, throughout the Commonwealth, uh, on Twitter and social networking sites were looking at this around the world while we here in this country couldn't know what was going on in our own parliament. How have we created a climate where that sort of thing is possible? Well, it's a recognition that um, there is a competing interest between freedom of expression and other people's interests. Now, there is always going to be that interplay uh, between the rights of freedom of expression, very important, and the rights of people's reputation, privacy interests. Now, what this case exemplifies is that there is a, a hard edge coming up against parliamentary privilege, and it's a very important constitutional principle that what happens in Parliament uh, should be reported. Well, this is, this is absolute arrant nonsense, because, you know, John, since the times of John Wilkes, we've always tried to have an open justice system, we've always tried to have uh, everything open and, and, and above board, and we're not having it, and we don't have, but well, we don't know what our, our parliamentarians are up to, as long as judges are prepared to grant injunctions, which uh, Matthew Nicklin is prepared to represent, uh, uh, to large and ex uh, wealthy companies to, to prevent us knowing. Yes, but Mark, you know very well that uh, the courts aren't always open and there are competing interests that apply there. Many family proceedings are held in private, particularly to protect the interests of children. For so there's not an absolute, reason. There's not an absolute rule. Now, the parliamentary rule that we currently have, that everything is fair go in Parliament, uh, may need to be looked at. The, po the question is, if somebody can suffer real harm... So your position is really that the public shouldn't be able to know what's going on in no. Parliament? No, no, not, 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 not that at all. But, Mark, you have to recognise that on occasions there will be things said in Parliament that can cause people real harm. And if they're wrong, that person has no redress. But the, do you also defend the right of people to seek an injunction and then seek an injunction which says that we may not even know there is an injunction. I mean, how many things could be out there that we're not allowed to know? In certain circumstances, it's obvious that that's going to have to be part of the relief that's claimed, because if you, if you, if you have a story which is partly out in the, in the public domain, you need to be able to, if it's a privacy story that's designed to protect somebody's privacy interests, the fact of reporting, the fact they've imply, applied for an injunction will put them under intense uh, scrutiny and pressure, and it, essentially uh, it will cause, because of the uh, mm. internet dimension, we, it will cause the fact eventually to come out and frustrate the purpose of but the injunction But what you're in the actually place. doing by taking these proceedings, and, and Matthew Nicklin and his ilk have been in the vanguard of this over the last couple of years of developing um, trials, secret trials in this country where it, people go off and they get an injunction and the newspapers can't even report the names of the parties that there is an injunction in place. The, the newsrooms of this country absolutely rammed full of these secret injunctions and finally it's out and it should be a public disgrace and Parliament should investigate it. Is there some peculiar rot to the English system that this has been allowed to happen? No, it's nothing new. I don't know why Mark says it's, uh, that this is a, a problem that's a new thing. Uh, the courts have always retained the right to, uh, to restrain publication which will frustrate the very purpose. If you are bringing privacy proceedings to vindicate a privacy right, the last thing you want to do is expose the very thing you're trying to protect in the proceedings themselves. I understand why it's good for business for people like you that... Uh, Austr Australians, Russians, Israelis or whoever can come to this country and seek some sort of legal redress which actually has no real location in this country. It's good for you guys, of course. Well, I'm not Why sure that's good the, for us. It's not the sort of principle that, that, that applies. I mean, you can't just turn up at an English court and say, hello, I'm from some far-flung jurisdiction, I'd like some remedy, please. You've got to be able to prove that there's some reason why the English well, courts... I'm sorry, that's absolute arrogant nonsense. We're at the moment entertaining in our courts uh, a Ukrainian oligarch who has come here to sue a Ukrainian uh, language website based in Ukraine, which just happens to be accessible to the one or two people in this country who can read Ukrainian. Uh, and that is, you know, we're paying for that as English taxpayers. 